when we solve second order homogeneous equations with constant coefficients and we have distinct real roots. We'll say what that means in a second. So here we have a y a times y double prime plus b y prime plus c y equals zero. Homogeneous, second order, a, b, and c are constants. And we want to remember that we're actually going to be solving this equation a times m squared plus b times m plus c equals zero. And this is what we call our auxiliary equation. Some people call it the characteristic equation, but we're going to call it the auxiliary equation. And we just solve it like we would a normal quadratic equation from precalculus or from algebra. And if we get two distinct roots here, so let's say we get solutions to this equation are m1 and m2, so two values for m that are real numbers and distinct, then what we're going to get for our solution will be that y equals some constant times e to the whatever m1 is times x plus some constant, another constant, we'll call it c2, times e to the m2 times x. That's going to be the general form for our answer. The idea is whatever we get for our distinct real numbers for the values of m are going to go in as constant multiples of x inside of our exponential. All right, let's look at a few examples and we'll sort of get the idea of how this works. All right, our first example, y double prime plus 7y prime minus 18y equals 0. So we'll go ahead and write down that our auxiliary equation is going to look like m squared plus 7m minus 18 equal to 0. And we would solve this. We could solve this by factoring. So here this will give us m plus 9 times m minus 2. So we assume that you're still good at the factoring business, equal to zero. And then when we set each of these factors equal to zero, then we get answer, so our first m value is going to be negative nine, and our second m value is going to be two. And so we go ahead and plug that information in our solution, y equal to some constant, c1, e to the negative 9x plus some other constant, c2, times e to the 2x. Here's another 2y double prime plus 3y prime plus y equals 0. So we'll go ahead and change to the auxiliary equation. 2m squared plus 3m plus 1 equal to 0. And we factor this here. This is factorable, so we'll get 2m plus 1, m plus 1, set each factor equal to 0 there. And then if we solve this left-hand equation, we'll get the first value for m is going to be negative a half. When we solve the second value for m, we'll get negative 1. So then our general solution for the equation is going to be y equals c1 e to the, I'll go ahead and write negative x over 2, in other words negative 1 half x, plus some constant c2 times e to the negative x, or in other words a negative 1x. All right, here we've got another example, y double prime minus 4y prime plus 2y is 0. When we convert to auxiliary equation, m squared minus 4m plus 2 equal to 0, we might notice this doesn't factor, so we'll go ahead and use the quadratic formula to do this. So m equals negative b would be 4, plus minus the square root of b squared would be 16 minus 4ac, 4 times 1 times 2, that would give us 8, all over 2, and... So we'll go ahead and have 4 
plus or minus 2 times the square root of 2, once we're finished with that, over 2, which gives us m1 is equal to 2 plus the square root of 2, m2 is equal to 2 minus the square root of 2. So these are still real numbers, so they fall into our pattern here. So y equals c1, e to the 2 plus square root 2 quantity x plus c2 times e to the 2 minus square root 2 quantity x. So here we're absent one term of what we usually see, but since it's not the y double prime term, we're still definitely a second order equation that fits the standard procedure here. So we get y double prime converting to m square for the auxiliary equation, plus the next term being 6m. Technically your third term is plus zero there, but we'll just go ahead and write equals zero. And then solving this auxiliary equation, we pull out the greatest common factor, m. So we get m times m plus 6 equal to 0. And now what happens here, we set each factor equal to 0, and we get that the first value for m would be 0. The second value for m would be negative 6. And so if you think about plugging those values in to our solution form, you'd get c1e to the 0x plus c2 e to the minus 6x, but if you look at e to the 0x, we'd get e to the 0, right, no matter what x was, so that would give you a value of 1 for this. So we, the way we'll really write this when we get m equals 0 as one of our roots, and this will just be c1 plus c2 e to the negative 6x. For this one here, when we write the auxiliary equation for this, we actually start with m squared. We're missing the y prime term, so there's no m term. So we just get m squared minus 9 equal to 0. And then when we solve either by factoring or by square root, we get that m is equal to plus or minus 3 for this one. So when we write the answer, we would say y equals c1e to the 3x minus c2e to the negative 3x. Now we could certainly write the answer that way and that would be just fine and a lot of people prefer to just keep it straightforward. Um, one thing we want to remember that maybe we recall from back in calculus when you talked about hyperbolic functions, remember that cinch of something has an exponential definition, which is e to that something minus e to the opposite of that something over 2. And then we also had the hyperbolic cosine cosh of x is equal to e to the x plus e to the minus x over 2. And you can see with the same 3x and minus 3x, and we have this sort of link between this expression and this expression, where over here we have, you know, we've got these opposite signs going on of the exponentials there, e to the x and e to the minus x. It turns out another way to write this would actually be y equals c1 times cosh of 3x, or hyperbolic cosine of 3x, plus c2 cinch, or hyperbolic sine of 3x. I won't go too much into detail about the proof of why we don't get the minus 3x in one of them and why they're both just 3x. Um, you might be able to either, we'll either make a video later about that or you can, uh, you can check it out in a book somewhere. All right, so let's just look at one more example of the type we just did. So 4y double prime minus 25y equals 0 will give us auxiliary equation 4m squared minus 25. So again, there's no m term here, equal to 0. And then if you think about what we get when we factor this, we get 2m plus 5. We also get 2m minus 5 equal to 0. And so we get m is equal to 
positive or negative 5 halves when we solve this, giving us a solution of the form y equals some constant e to the 5x over 2 plus some constant c2 e to the negative 5x over 2. And we could certainly leave it that way, and a lot of people will want it in that form. Or we can change to the hyperbolic notation y equals c1 cosh of 5x over 2 plus some constant c2 times cinch or hyperbolic sine of 5x over 2. So either of those would be equivalent. Okay, this should give you a very good start, I think, on when we have distinct real roots when we're working with the auxiliary equation for second order.